you. Miss Lynn is here with you today. We're going to sing some songs, have some fun learning, and also do a really fun science project together. Are you ready to get started? Here we go. Good morning, weekday friends. How are you? Good morning, weekday friends. How are you? It is time to start our day. We are here to work and play. Good morning, weekday friends. How are you? Eyes are watching, ears are listening, lips are closed, hands are still, feet are very quiet, you should really try it. Listening time, listening time, good job. Hello Liliana, hello Anna, hello Sophia, hello to Patrick too. Hello, Mila. Hello, Bradley. Hello, Zachary. Hello to Vivian, too. Hello, Aria. Hello, Brianna. Hello, Rowan. Hello to Amelia, too. Woo! Hello, Callie. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Miss Nancy. Hello to Miss Lynn, too. Good job. We have another special song to sing today. I hope you're ready to join me. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Miss Nancy. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Miss Nancy. We miss you. We can't wait to see you. We hope you have a great, great birthday. All right, friends, we're going to get going with our calendar in just a little bit, but we're going to start our lesson today with a fun story. Time to use our imaginations and listen to a story called It Looked Like Spilt Milk. And we're going to really think about what Charles G. Shaw means when he says it looked like spilt milk. I wonder what looked like spilt milk. It looked like spilt milk. Sometimes it looked like spilt milk, but it wasn't spilt milk. Sometimes it looked like a rabbit, but it wasn't a rabbit. Sometimes it looked like a bird, but it wasn't a bird. Sometimes it looked like a tree, but it wasn't a tree. Sometimes it looked like an ice cream cone, but it wasn't an ice cream cone. Sometimes it looked like a flower, but it wasn't a flower. Sometimes it looked like a pig, but it wasn't a pig. Sometimes it looked like a birthday cake, but it wasn't a birthday cake. It was a birthday cake for Miss Nancy. Sometimes it looked like a sheep, but it wasn't a sheep. Sometimes it looked like a great horned owl, but it wasn't a great horned owl. Sometimes it looked like a mitten, but it wasn't a mitten. Sometimes it looked like a squirrel, but it wasn't a squirrel. Sometimes it looked like an angel, but it wasn't an angel. Sometimes it looked like spilt milk, but it wasn't spilt milk. It was just a cloud in the sky. Yeah. If you go outside today, boys and girls, I hope you get a chance to look up in the sky and see some beautiful clouds and see if they look like something else that really triggers your imagination to find uh, a picture of something else that that cloud might look like, like we just read about in the story, it looked like spilt milk. Well, clouds are an important part of our lesson today because today we're going to talk about rain. It's almost at the end of the month of March. Pretty soon it's going to be April. And with the month of April 
comes lots and lots of rain. They even say April showers bring us May flowers. That means that all the rain that happens in April brings the beautiful flowers to us in the next month, the month of May. But we're going to do an experiment today that hopefully answers the question, how does rain happen? Well, we have to learn a little bit about the water cycle in order to understand how rain happens. All right, let's get started. First of all, you know what this little guy is, the sun. The sun heats up water in our lakes, in our oceans, in our rivers, in our streams. Some of this water does something called evaporation. Can we say that word together? Evaporation. That means that the water turns into gas, water vapor. And this warm water vapor rises up into the atmosphere. That means very high up into the sky. And before you know it, it mixes with the cold air up in the atmosphere. And they come together to form clouds. This warm air cools as liquid droplets form in the clouds. This is called condensation. Can you say that with me? Condensation. Very good. When enough of these droplets start to come together, the cloud gets very, very heavy and very, very dark. And the cloud really can't hold all of this, these water droplets anymore. So what do you think happens? That's right. It starts to rain. And that's called precipitation. Can you say that with me? Precipitation. Good job. All right. So we learned that evaporation causes water from our rivers, lakes, streams, and oceans to rise up as a gas, as water vapor. It mixes with the cool air in the atmosphere up high in the sky. And that causes liquid droplets to come together to make clouds that get very, very dark and heavy. And before you know it, lots of rain starts to fall from the heavy, dark clouds as precipitation. If it's really, really cold, do you know what this precipitation is called? Snow. You got it. All right, friends. Well, that's the water cycle, very simply. Now we're going to try a couple of quick experiments that you can try at home if you have the materials handy. If not, you can just Watch along with me. Come on. Okay. So we will need some empty container, an empty container, clear, so you can see what's happening. Some water in a pitcher. And you can use this. This is a turkey baster, but if you have something smaller, something called a syringe, you can use that. We're going to need a sponge. And in a little bit, we'll use some shaving cream too. Now, my materials are made of glass, so I'm going to be very careful. If you have plastic, that's probably a little safer for you to use, or you can make sure that a grown-up is helping you with these things. Okay, so we're going to pretend that this sponge is our cloud. I need my little weather puppets to help me out. The sun is going to warm the waters, of the oceans, lakes, rivers, and streams, some of that water will evaporate. That means it will rise as water vapor, a gas, and it will mix with the cold, cool air of the, in the atmosphere and form water droplets as clouds. Before you know it, those clouds get dark and heavy and raindrops start to fall. All right, let's give it a try. This is going to be our little cloud sponge. These are our water droplets that are forming in the atmosphere when the water vapor mixes with the cool air in the atmosphere. Okay, nothing really happening yet. What do you think is going to happen as I add more liquid, more water to this cloud sponge? Looks like the cloud is holding a lot. Nothing really seems... Not too much is happening just yet. Let's try adding a little bit more. What do you think will happen as I add more water to my cloud sponge? Okay. Oh, raining in 
inside my jar? Looks like this cloud sponge cannot hold any more water droplets. And here we have rain. Lynn's friends all want to play. Come again another day. Rain, rain, go away. No, don't go away. We need you, Rain. We need you to help the flowers grow. Okay. So my sponge did a really good job acting like a cloud. It held as much water droplets as it could before it released them as rain or precipitation. All right. That was fun. You can try that on your own if you can, if you have the right stuff. Let's try it again. We're going to use some shaving cream to make ourselves a little cloud. We're going to pretend that the water in this container is the air. The sun is going to warm the water in the oceans, rivers, lakes, and streams. Some of it rises as a gas, as a vapor. It's going to mix with the cold air in the atmosphere, form water droplets that become a dark and heavy rain cloud. And then before you know it, raindrops. All right. Let's make ourselves a nice squishy puppy cloud. Ooh, that's a good one. And we're going to use some blue food coloring to act as water droplets. I don't see anything happening yet. What do you think will happen if I add more food coloring to my cloud? I don't think the cloud is heavy enough to start making it rain yet. Got a little bit of rain from my pitcher. Underneath the cloud, the water that we're pretending is air is, looks like it's starting to rain in there because the blue is coming right through that cloud as rain. All right, that was a fun one, a little bit of a messy one, but that's okay. All right, so a couple of simple experiments that you can try or hope you enjoyed watching that show us how the water cycle works. All right, friends, let's come on back over this way, and we're going to take a look at some of the things that we practice during this week. All right, oh, hi Taffy. And let's take a look at our March calendar together. Are we ready? Here we go. Every week has seven days, seven days, seven days. Every week has seven days. Can you name them? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. All right, today's day of the week begins with the sound of F. That tells me F, F, F. What is it? You got it. It's Friday. Today is Friday. The month is March. Soon it will be April, a very, very rainy month. March. Twenty-seven, And that's a very special day because we're celebrating our friend Miss Nancy's birthday. Today is Friday, March 27th, 2020. All right. So we had fun learning about the letter U. And we're going to just talk about the sounds of U again together. Remember that U teaches us about two sounds. A uh, and you. And we learned a special song to talk about these different sounds. Here we go. U is for umbrella. A, uh, a, uh, umbrella. U is for up. A, 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 good. U is for uncle. A, uh, a, uh, uncle. U is for us all together. Uh, uh, us. U is for understand. 
uh, uh, understand. Good job. Okay. We know that U makes the sound U. Like U is for unicorn. U, U, unicorn. U is for utensils. U, U, utensils. Good. Q is for unicycle. U, U, unicycle. U is for United States. U, U, United States. U is for uniform. U, U, uniform. U is for ukulele. U, U, ukulele. Good job, my friends. All right. And that's another very fun U word that has helped us out this week. Okay, to get my violin skills ready for next week. Okay, my friends, we're going to take another look at my chart. And we're going to see if we can find some U words. We're going to circle them. Be careful, some of them are tricky. Some words that do not begin with the sound of U are hiding in our chart. We're going to find those. We're going to cross them out. All right. Take a look. Do you see a picture of something that begins with the sound of U? Try and think about all of those objects that we looked at in our letter of the week basket back on Monday. Do you see anything up here that matches? What's this? You got it. It's an umbrella. Should I give it a circle? You bet. Okay, what else do you see? How about this? That's right, it's a unicycle. Give it a circle. U is for unicycle. All right. A fork, a spoon, and a knife all together is utensils. Yes. Circle our utensils. Utensils are a U word. What else do you see? Oh, we just heard it. What's this? You got it. It's a ukulele. That's a U word. We're going to circle it. Do you see a map? You do? Where? Oh, here it is. What is this a map of? Yeah, the shape of the United States. That's a U word. Give it a circle. All right. Anything? Oh, yes. Our beautiful little rainbow friend at the end. What do you see? Yep, unicorn, U is for unicorn. Let's give her a little circle. Very good, I think we have everything. Oh, a couple more. Where's this arrow pointing? Up, very good, circle it. Up is a U word. Anything else? Oh, yeah, one more. Little underpants, give him a circle. Underpants is a U word. Okay, we have a couple of words that shouldn't be circled because they don't make the sound of U. What are they? Star. That's not a U word. Letter S makes the sound. Star. We're going to cross that out today. How about this? U word? Nah, it's a balloon. That's a B word. We'll cross that out. Very good. What's that? Yeah, it's a fish. U word? No. Let's cross it out. Bye bye, fish. All right. Good job, friends. We learned how to write the letter U this week. Always start at top, up at the skyline. We trace down to the grass line, curve around, and go all the way back up for uppercase U. Lowercase U looks exactly the same, it's just smaller. So we start in the middle, on the plane line, trace down to the grass line curve around, and trace back up to the plane line. And that's lowercase u. Now, you've had a chance to do some practicing writing the letter u, and we'll talk about where we can do that for extra practice. Also, you made a beautiful unicorn picture earlier in the week, and down below it says u is for unicorn. Make sure that you trace your upper and lowercase u on this project. And how about your beautiful umbrella with blue raindrops? How did that come out? I hope it looks great. You'll practice upper and lowercase u on that. U is for umbrella. Last but not least, we're going to take a look at the next page in our March writing journal. 
That's where you can do all the writing practice that you want and some of your very own pictures. The next page is going to show you upper and lower case U. And you are going to practice writing upper and lower case U. Just the way we learned it. You'll do a row of uppercase and then a row of lowercase and then a picture of your own. Try and think of a U word that you would like to make a picture of. I made a big yellow umbrella, just like Sunny's umbrella. Remember the story Sunny that we read earlier in the week? Well, that was one of my favorites this week. So I decided to make a picture of her yellow umbrella. But maybe you'll do a unicycle or a unicorn or maybe a ukulele or some utensils or the United States, your choice. So up at the top is where you can make your picture. Down below is where you'll practice your writing. Okay, well this was so much fun, friends. I hope you had a great time today and I hope that you get to go outside and be in your backyard, maybe with your brother, sister, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa. And even though we can't really all be together, you can be with your family and have just the best time ever. So get outside, get some fresh air in your backyard, do some fun things like maybe put on music and dance or ride your bicycle around a little bit, keep moving, keep looking at those clouds. All right, and I can't wait to see you all next week. Thank you so much for joining me and have a great rest of your day. Goodbye, goodbye everyone. I sure hope that you had fun. Tomorrow is another day. We will laugh and sing and play. Goodbye, goodbye everyone. I sure hope that you had fun. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. All right, friends. See you next time. Goodbye.